Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Aircraft carriers have been essential to naval warfare since their introduction in the early 20th century. As these massive ships travel around the world, they need to be able to anchor in a wide range of conditions. They are designed to be dropped from the ship's bow or stern and have large flukes that dig into the ocean floor to secure the ship in place. Aircraft carrier anchors play a crucial role in keeping these vessels stationary. Aircraft carrier anchors are designed to withstand the weight and force of the vessel, which can reach up to 100,000 tons. They are made of high-strength steel and typically weigh between 30 and 50 tons each. Modern anchors are equipped with hydraulics and motors to help lower and raise them as well as maneuver the chains and cables that hold the anchor in place. To ensure continued safe operation, aircraft carriers are periodically dry docked for maintenance. This includes the inspection of their anchors. In 2019, the USS John C. Stennis underwent maintenance, which included the removal of its portside anchor. The process involved cutting the anchor chain and using a crane to lift the anchor onto a barge. The anchor was then transported to a Navy facility for servicing. The repainting of anchors is among the refurbishment works that ensure the anchors are protected from corrosion and damage. The painting process typically involves cleaning and sanding to remove any rust or other contaminants. Then, a primer is applied to the anchors to help the paint adhere properly. Properly painted anchors not only maintain the ship's appearance, but also contribute to its safety and longevity by preventing rust and degradation. Finally, a high quality paint designed for use in marine environments is applied in several coats. Once the anchors are reconditioned and repainted, they are transported back to the ship for reinstallation. In 2020, the Navy carried out the USS George H.W. Bush anchors on load. It was a critical operation that marked the end of a one-year dry docking. The anchor is first raised using a combination of hydraulic and electrical power to lift it off of the dry dock. Once the anchor is securely in place, a pin is inserted to prevent it from accidentally dislodging. The windlass is then engaged, allowing the anchor chain to be slowly lowered back into the water. Anchor onload requires precision and attention to detail from the crew and the shipyard team. Anchor chains are a vital component of the aircraft carrier's anchoring system. Thus, proper maintenance is crucial for ensuring the safety and effectiveness of this equipment. Thank <laughs> you. 
Regular washing of anchor chains is necessary to remove salt and other debris that may have accumulated on the chains. This can be done using high pressure water or soaking the chains in a cleaning solution. Anchor washing is typically done while the chains are still on board the vessel. When deploying anchor chains, it is essential to carefully control the speed and tension of the chain to avoid damaging the equipment or the vessel itself. But the crew is well trained and follows standard procedures to prevent accidents and ensure the safe operation of the aircraft carrier. The rope heaving process is another essential aspect of a sea anchor revolution on a ship. The rope heaving process involves the coordinated efforts of the deck department crew, the bridge team, and the line handlers on shore. During this process, the crew is responsible for deploying and retrieving the ship's mooring lines, which are used to secure the vessel to appear or anchor it in place. The crew must prepare the mooring lines by coiling and uncoiling them properly. Passing lines through chocks and fair leads and securing lines to bollards and cleats. The bridge team communicates with the line handlers on shore to ensure that the lines are deployed and retrieved at the appropriate time. Line handling is a physically demanding task that requires strength, agility, and endurance. However, it is also crucial to maintain the ship's readiness and ensure that it can operate effectively in various conditions. While aircraft carrier anchors are massive and complex, civilian anchors are enormous. In fact, the world's largest anchor belongs to the Seawise Giant, which was once the largest ship ever built. The ship's anchor is located in Hong Kong, which serves as a reminder of the impressive size and power of the vessel. The anchor weighed a whopping 36 tons and measured 23 feet tall by 14 feet wide. It was attached to a 20 links chain that is over 1,200 feet long, making it one of the largest and heaviest anchors ever constructed. Although the ship was scrapped in India in 2010, its anchor was transported to Hong Kong Maritime Museum and remained a testament to the incredible engineering feats of the past. The repair and maintenance of civilian anchors is a critical process. Civilian anchors are used on a wide variety of ships, from cargo vessels to cruise liners. Regular inspection and maintenance are required to ensure their proper functioning. This includes checking for signs of wear or damage, replacing worn components, and performing routine cleaning and lubrication. Any necessary repairs or replacements must be carried out promptly to prevent the anchor from failing, which could result in severe consequences for the ship and its crew. While conventional anchor systems are commonly used for vessels, innovative technologies like steam adjusters are gaining popularity in offshore industries such as wind farms. Steve adjusters are essentially hydraulic jacks that can be used to adjust the tension in mooring lines, allowing the device to adjust the height of the structure in all directions.
This makes it easy to compensate for changes in water level, ensuring that the structure remains level and stable at all times. It is a reliable and efficient way to maintain the integrity and safety of floating structures on water. Suction anchors are another fixture for offshore structures. This mooring system is commonly used in offshore oil and gas operations, as well as for renewable energy installations like wind turbines. Suction anchors work by using a vacuum effect to create a seal between the anchor and the seafloor. This is achieved by pumping water out of a chamber within the anchor. Therefore, creating a low pressure zone causes the anchor to suction into the seabed, which provides a stable and secure foundation for the structure above. Another modern technology used in the offshore wind industry is the jack-up self-lift vessels. This unique solution was developed to overcome the challenges of offshore construction and maintenance projects. These vessels feature a large platform that can be raised or lowered using hydraulic jacks mounted on extendable legs. When the platform is raised, the legs extend downward to lift the ship out of the water allowing it to work at a fixed height above the surface. By eliminating the need for anchors, these vessels can be quickly and easily repositioned to work on structures such as floating wind turbines or oil platforms that are located in deep water. Unlike traditional offshore wind turbines fixed to the seabed, floating wind turbines are anchored in place using mooring systems, which allow the turbines to move with the waves and currents. This technology opens up new areas for wind power development, including deeper waters where conventional wind turbines are not feasible. The Kincardin project in Scotland is a notable example of the installation of floating offshore wind turbines. The project consists of a 50 milliwatt array of five turbines, each with a capacity of 9.5 milliwatts, located in waters up to 262 feet deep. Installation of the turbines began in the summer of 2020 and was carried out by Bourbon Subsea and Bryhoff using a jack-up vessel and a floating crane. The turbines were mounted on a semi-submersible floating platform, which was anchored to the seabed using a specialized mooring system. Once the platform was in place, the turbines were carefully lifted into position and secured to the platform. The turbines were then connected to the electrical grid via an underwater cable, which transmits the electricity generated by the turbine to the shore. The successful installation of the Kincardine project demonstrates the potential of floating offshore wind turbines to provide clean energy in deep water locations. As technology continues to advance in the anchor industry, it is likely that we will see more innovative offshore projects like this being developed in the years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.